Coming up on this episode of the Preston North End, we can warm up. We'll look back at the win at Birmingham City and we'll start the build-up to the FA Cup visit of Tottenham Hotspur. All that and so much more only here on the Preston North End, we can warm up. And a big hello, we're talking Tottenham Hotspur in just a moment here on the weekend warm-up, but we're going to start by going back to Birmingham City. Some of you, and you know who you are, turned up slightly late to St Andrews and missed the first two goals, didn't you? Well, just for you and, of course, all the rest of us to enjoy those moments, here's goals from Ryan Ledson, from Alan Brown and that 2-1 win at St Andrews. Here's Kavra putting pressure on the Preston defence and take out the near post by Freddie Woodman. Well, in the sixth minute here, applause all around the stadium as a tribute to Arthur Lavinio Hughes, the young Birmingham supporter who sadly passed away in June 2020. Brown delivering, Delat hoping it might come his way. Back in from Ledson. Collins' clearance is a poor one. Brady tosses in high, Cannon lurking at the far post. And now he drops Kyle. Oh, what a strike that is from Ryan Ledson! He has built at that one! Preston North End hit the front, and what a hit from Ryan Ledson! Stirred down the line by Andrew Hughes, that could carry through to Delat. The angle against him, deflected. And away it goes for the corner. Over that near post, Brown attacking it and scoring! The second goal for Preston. And it's the skipper who flicks it at the near post to double Preston's lead. to it by Maxime Collin. That wasn't picked up, and Woodburn's onto it. Cannon. Woodburn deflected, and only just wide. Trusty. Losing out to McCann. Here's Cannon. Danger here. Cannon's found his way into the box. Delaps in there with him. Ruddy spills the shot, and it's swept away by Long. Blues trying to up the ante as it's launched in towards Deeney, a cushion header across. Hogan is in there, first touch was too heavy, and the chance disappears. Brady's free kick, and Ruddy is forced into a save. Right, it's time for the Cup. Tottenham Hotspur, the visitors to Deepdale. We'll give you all the details about how you can follow it later on in the show. But first of all, cast your mind back, if you can, look it up in a book or on the computer if you're not old enough to do that. 1996, that's the last time we got a positive result against Spurs. League Cup, first leg at Deepdale. Darren Anton scored quite early Preston equalised quite late. How late? Very, very, very late. Who scored it on his full debut? Michael Holt. Where's Michael Holt now, you ask? You're on the weekend warm-up. So let's start with that very question. Where are you? How are you? And what are you doing? Right, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm well. Uh, physically well, maybe not so much. I've had a few knee operations, ankle operation. I'm having back surgery late this year. So, um, and... And I always hark back to the the old adage of play sports when you're young because it's really good for you. It'll keep you fit. It'll keep you well in later life. And now when I'm looking at my fifth and sixth lines of surgery, I'm kind of looking back a broken man thinking, yeah, maybe not the best advice. But I wouldn't change that for the world at the time. It was absolutely fantastic. 
Um, in terms of where I'm at, um, I left I left uh, football around the age of 30, went playing part-time, uh, did a little bit of managing as well. Uh, I joined the police force, Lancashire Police Force, uh, where I've been uh, 17 years in March. Uh, I'm now a police sergeant. Um, and yeah, loving it. Absolutely love two completely contrasting careers, uh, both with very different uh, kind of um, vocations, but both very, very rewarding in a different way. And I know that you follow North End still, despite the fact, well, born in Burnley, started playing for Blackburn. But I'd like to say there's a big part of your heart at North End. You, I know you come to Deep Down. I see you there quite a lot. And uh, you caught up with quite a few familiar faces on Friday. So uh, at the 25th anniversary of the, the former players uh, do. So what what did playing for North End mean to you? What what was it like for you? Oh, it's absolutely, it was fantastic. Um, it was the first club I I made, obviously, first team uh, appearances for. Obviously, I was at Rovers. Uh, I'm a Rovers fan. I make no bones about that. I've always said that. And I was there when, um, when they won the Premier League. So being there at that time, training with the likes of Shearer and people like that day in, day out, it doesn't, I didn't think it would get any better. But I only ever made reserve appearances. <laughs> And and there's a massive difference between being in in youth teams and reserve teams. To suddenly coming into a club, I came to I came to North End as, as a sixth choice striker. Gary Peters told me when he signed me, he said, "I've got five fantastic strikers ahead of you that have that have proven themselves." And it, this was the year that uh, North End got to, uh, promoted as champions from the old third division. Um, thankfully, I had an absolutely fantastic preseason. I think I scored something like eight or nine goals in preseason. And, and I kind of got myself from the six and I, and I ended up being on the bench for the first game of the season. Um, and I had a little bit part to play and, and I remember coming on. I think, sure, I'm going back a lot of years now, but I'm sure it was Bristol City away and I came on with about 10 minutes to go. Uh, and it, the, it was just a completely different atmosphere. First team football, you've got all of these fans here, they're all cheering for you and things like that. Um so I kind of, yeah, this is good. I'm really enjoying this. So another couple of appearances coming on, bit parts here and there. And then luckily for me, not so much Steve Wilkie. Um, Wilkes got injured the week before, the Saturday before we played Spurs. And because I'd been coming on, it was, right, right, Mick, you're, uh, you're going to be starting. You're going to be starting against Spurs. So obviously a young lad. But you don't have, you don't have any fears then. You just have excitement and, you know, you don't get nervous. I've, I've been more nervous walking into a room full of people than running out in front of 30, 40,000 people on a Saturday in your shorts and thingy, expecting the world of you. You didn't have them. You didn't have, you didn't have the, uh, the, the anxiety or the, or the nervousness. It was just, you were just, everything was just great. Everything was just good. You know what I mean? So going out there and then obviously um, taking it from there and, and what happened in the game um, just, led me to be liked by the fans. And then one, once I'd done that, it was just, yeah, it was just really awesome. Uh, and I always say it, and I've always said it to you, Simon, that it it was my favourite club as a footballer. And I've been to a few clubs, including non, uh, non-league non teams and, and semi-pro and things. I bet, I, I bet I've been to double figures. And, and there is no club like North End for uh, atmosphere, uh, family, family togetherness and when I say family togetherness I mean the supporters and the and the players uh, and uh, as you just alluded to uh, there they set up a, uh, a players uh, ex-players association in conjunction with the fans 25 years ago and we had the 25th anniversary actually it was on Saturday night and just seeing so many of the older fans there and and, and the older players I mean, there was there was about 250 people turned out for it. It was an absolutely fantastic night. It was really, really good. Good. Um, Notts County, I think. I just Notts County, quick, just right. Just a quick look there in terms of what the match was. And let me just take you back then to that Spurs game, because obviously it's, it's Tottenham Hotspur in the FA Cup for Preston North End this weekend. What were your memories of that, your full debut in a professional football team? And it's against Tottenham Hotspur, who at the time, not necessarily at the top, but they had a lot of big name players, including Darren Anderton, who played well at Deepdale, I seem to remember. Yeah, exactly. First game, and it's a team full of internationals. I think it was Colin Calderwood and Sol Campbell at the back, with Ian Walker, the England keeper in goals as well at the time. 
So um, we started really, really poorly as well. We let them get to us. And I think they scored after four or five minutes. Mm. It was Anderton scored a 20-yard screamer. Um, but then we just grew into the game. And and I just seemed to be getting like lots of chances. I had probably four or five good shots on target, well-saved blocks here and there. And we never seemed out of it. We always seemed like we we're, were in with a chance. Um, and then... And and I keep watching because people keep obviously replaying the 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 goal the goal. Uh, so 93rd minute, uh, one nil down still. Dean Barrick pumps a long ball over to Bryce on the far right hand side. Bryce whips it across the face of goal, and I just get in. I think it's in front of Campbell, and slide it into the net for the equaliser. Um, and I didn't know what to do, <laughs> so you I just I, think I just, just <laughs> ran. I think I put my hands up in the air, ran, and just threw myself on the floor. Probably because I was pretty tired at that stage as well. Full debut against like Premiership opposition, 93rd minute. My legs weren't working, and it was like, and then everybody jumped on top of me. And I was like, can't breathe, can't breathe, lads, can't breathe. But just the elation, and I think, oh, just the atmosphere behind the goal as well, because it was at the town end. It was, oh, it was amazing, amazing night. And 26 years ago, I'm still living off it. And well, Bryce says he made your career as well. I must say that at this point, Bryce, because wherever wherever he went, you went, and then he says he was providing goals for you for pretty much a lot of the, lot of your career. Is that fair? <laughs> I don't like to big Bryce up, as you as you well know. I like to give him as much stick as I can. Uh, but yeah, no, genuinely, as as older players go, there was there were two or three the likes of Sav Bryce, Russ Wilcox. They all took me under the wing when they were younger, and 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 really looked after me. Um, and yeah, and, and all right, he, he might have set one goal up. I don't remember him setting many other goals up in my career. And we did play a few games together, but I'll let him have that one. And we'll have the second half of that chat with Mickey coming up later on in the show. But it's time to put our ears to the wall here at X Action. Let's just put a camera in front of them instead. It's time to talk to the two Ryans, Ryan Ledson, in just a moment. But let's start with the gaffer. Ryan Low. Well, we expect them to come with a strong squad first and foremost, and whatever team they pick will be very strong. We know that. Uh, we know the type of formation they play. We know the type of football they play. The hard to beat, the hard to break down. Um, you know, there's this myth that they don't start games well and they, they finish games fantastically well. So we're just ready for whatever comes our way. Um, we know there's going to be large spells of where we're defending well, which we have to be. Uh, but we're hoping that we can, you know, get some chances in there and create some opportunities, of course, cause, you know, but we'll put a game plan together that we feel suits and, and, and can work and just go out and enjoy the occasion. Look, we're coming up against fantastic op opposition, aren't we, and some top, top players. So what I want my lads to do is go out there and enjoy it and give a real, real good account of themselves. Obviously, coming up against some of the best players in the world, um, you only have to look at the, the, front, the front three with Harry Kane, Son, maybe the Charleston. Um, They've all just been the World Cup, um, so obviously the the unbelievable players. But it, it's good to test yourself, and um, at deep tail, hopefully it's going to be a full house, and they can get behind us, the fans, and and, and we can give it a real good go. It, it is the message: is go out and showcase what you can do. We're live on BBC, which everyone knows, uh, but go and show good players how good you can be as well. Because you know, I think the respect will be there mutually that they'll respect us. We'll massively respect them for where they are and what they've done. But yeah, I think it's a case of going out and expressing yourselves and showcasing what you can do. Obviously, they've got, <clears throat> I would say, the best striker in the world, in uh, Harry Kane. <clears throat> um, obviously, as I've mentioned, they've got Son, but they're, they're solid at the back as well. And obviously, they've got Conte, who's, who's a really, he's an unbelievable manager, isn't he? He's been everywhere. Um, so they'll be solid and, and they'll be good going forward. So, listen, we all know it's going to be a tough game, but... Um, let's hopefully we can, we can give them a, a good game and make a good account of ourselves. And if you want all the details right up to date on how you can follow the game, go to all the usual places. I'll give you them again at the end of this show. Right, let's get back into that chat with Michael Holt. Remember, he scored at Deepdale for Preston North End back in 1996. He's got a spy in the Holt household who might be flying a flag for Tottenham Hotspur. More of that in just a moment. But let's just talk generally about how Michael loved his time at Preston North End. Yeah, um, really good. Uh, started really, really well. Uh, change of manager didn't do me um, any favours. Obviously, Gary Peters going, Moisey came in with his ideas. The thing I was a little bit disappointed to was I'd played for Moisey in the reserves when I weren't playing in the first team and, and never let him down. And he gave me lots of really good advice. 
and and I, and I get it because when when you become a manager, you have to take that step back and you have to change the way you are. So and I fully appreciate that because I've done management only at, at semi pro level, but you do have to uh, distance yourself from the players. And I just I just felt that when he became manager, I didn't get the opportunities. It didn't help. I think the first game in charge, I got injured in a game and I was out for a good part of two, three months. So obviously other people come in and they start doing well. And then you was a little bit like, right, well, he's got these other players in now. We're spending a little bit more. We're bringing X-Man United players in now, you know, on thousands of pounds a week. And and somebody has to be a fall guy. And unfortunately, uh, I never wanted to leave. I make no bones about it. But I'm coming to the end of my uh, contract. There's a club that want me. Um, that I've already been on loan at and scored lots of goals for already, uh, and they want me to to be their next kind of big signing. Um, didn't see it at the time as a bit of a step back, but looking back in hindsight, that was probably the biggest mistake in my career was leaving North End for Rochdale. Um, leaving North End for, uh, and I'm not belittling Rochdale yet. I think I could have probably gone to a higher club than the the situation that was at Rochdale. But at the time, you don't realise that you go into another professional club who want you and you're playing well with and you know players there and it seemed to be the right thing at the time. And hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? You know, you can uh, you can look back and go, I should have, should have, would have, could have. But at the end of the day, I did what I did and I still had some fantastic memories from it. Just finally then, FA Cup, as we said, this weekend against Tottenham, your first goal, your full debut. Is there split loyalties in the Holt household for this one? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't realise you were going to ask me that one. Well, so, good, no, good, good he'll want to mention. He'll want to mention. Good journalism. He'll want to mention. <laughs> so, uh, so my little boy is nine. Uh, he plays in under tens. Ever since being, ever since understanding football, he is Harry Kane mad. He has everything. He has signed photographs of Harry Kane. He has. Uh, England shirts with Harry Kane's name and he's had Spurs shirts with Harry Kane on. Um, every time Harry's on the TV, he's watching him. He, he even downloads things that cost me money because Kane's in it and things like that. Um, so to say he's to say he's Harry Kane mad. So because Harry Kane is Spurs and he automatically likes Spurs. Um, and, and in fairness, his first ever football game I took him to was a Spurs game earlier this season. I took him to the Spurs versus uh, Sport and Lisbon Champions League game. We're down in London at half term, October half term. And I've got some friends who are Spurs fans and they've managed to get me three tickets for the game. So I took him to the the, the uh, Spurs ground. And what an, what, what an amazing stadium that is. It is the best stadium I've ever been in. I've played in Old Trafford and I've played in a few other premiership grounds. But seeing that stadium, it's out of this world. So we went to that game. Harry Kane, we thought he'd got his golden goal in, in the third minute of injury time. Uh, and after five minutes of VAR, it got ruled off because I think his big toe was offside. Um, so I had one devastated little boy on the little tube going back home. Um, and then three days later, I took him for his debut at, uh, at North End. Uh, for the Middlesbrough game. And uh, we actually won a game at home for once, which is uh, which charm. is an achievement. Lucky but he charm. wasn't, I'm not quite sure he was impressed with the uh, the stadium, the same as the Spurs ground. Well, how rude. How rude. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I said that. We have padded seats and everything in our little executive area. and <laughs> well, so nobody still loved that, it. I hope Harry Kane plays. I hope he scores a goal that will be that record goal that eclipses Jimmy Greaves all time for Tottenham Hotspur. But I hope North End win. I do too. I do. We always love an underdog, don't we? And it'll bring back good memories. And both Noah and Michael will be following Preston North End this weekend and cheering them on. I'm sure you can too. For all the up-to-date details that you need, go on Preston North End's official website or any of their social media platforms. And that, for now, is that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on your notifications so you can be the first to find the next episode of the Weekend Warm-Up and the highlights Hoping for some good luck this weekend. And just for now, in fact, just forever. Come on, you whites!